Hi, everyone. Welcome again to STEM Station Spotlight, our official talk show. We'd like to thank you, everyone, for coming. I know Sundays can be very busy, but thank you for coming and joining us. We want this to be as interactive as possible. So if you have questions, please, you know, leave questions, interact, say hi. We just want to welcome all our guests. I have two amazing STEM stations for today. I'm going to head, go ahead and introduce myself. I am Nikisha Washington, the CEO and founder of Nyla Denae Enterprises, where we inspire and encourage young girls to have confidence, character, and class as they become future leaders. We're a little bit biased, so we want them to become future STEM leaders. But even if they don't choose that journey, we want to instill in them and empower them and educate them with the tools and skills necessary, such as problem solving, critical thinking skills. That is the reason why we have this sensation spotlight, because we want to hear from those sensations that have already and are in the journey process of becoming a sensation. You may ask, what is a sensation? A sensation is a trailblazer in the field of science, technology, engineering, and math who are skyrocketing to their highest potential, but doing it with style and grace, yes. So I'd like to welcome our two STEM stations for today. Our very first STEM station is Aisha Martin. Hi, Aisha. Hello. Hey. And then we have Ms. Brian Clemens. Hi, hi. Hi, hi, how are you? Yes, yes, so welcome. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get your, um, let you guys do your introductions. Um, I'm going to start with Aisha. So Aisha, um, when you um, are ready, go ahead and just give us your introduction. Tell us about yourself and what's brought you to this journey, you know, up to this point and who might have been an inspiration. Well, I am a biologist and forensic scientist. I am a recent career changer. So I'm actually going to be teaching science, seventh and eighth grade science, starting tomorrow. Wow. And Yeah. I, I never thought that that's something I'd be doing, but you never know where the journey will take you. That is true. And that is true. In, in the field of STEM, there are so many possibilities. The possibilities are endless. Um, I didn't really have, you know, specific role models in STEM or, you know, leaders that I looked up to, but I do have supportive family members and teachers who supported my love of science and really encouraged me to pursue that because it was something that I loved and that I was pretty good at. But um, that's what brought me here. And I, I don't regret it at all. Wow. I, we definitely want to hear more about, and we'll get there later about your journey into teaching. Cause you know, I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I just left teaching seventh grade. So now I'm more, I'm doing a high school, which I'm hoping will be a great experience because I'm doing project based learning and renewable energy. So I think that would be awesome. Oh, right. I definitely need to be with you. <laughs> yes, yes, I can definitely help. I love that we have sensation. We're doing more of the spotlight, um, like a talk show, because we have two different avenues, two two different mm -hmm. sensations that have different backgrounds. And so, um, Brian, if you can go ahead and tell us about your journey, and we'll let you hear because I think it's just awesome what you do as well. Yeah, sure. My name is Brian Clemens, and I am a mental health clinician in the field of psychology. So I deal more with behavioral sciences and the sciences in a behavioral health manner. Um, what led me here? I could say my grandmother led me here and my crazy dysfunctions of my family. Um, I could say that um, I became what I needed as a child. So the very thing that I needed as a kid um, is the very thing that I became as an adult. And I'm a huge advocate for mental health and kids. Um, but I could also say it was my fifth grade teacher. Um, she was amazing in every way. And she reminded me how being a black woman is like a badge of honor and how lucky oh. I am to be a black woman. So I can say it's one of those three, but you can pick. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm typing that down in the comments. Black woman being a badge of honor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think we both agree about that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'm so lucky to be a black woman. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we just have so much flavor and so much, you know, we just it's just awesome. And you can tell that we're always um imitated. So with our hairstyles, mm -hmm. everything, with our our body features. At first they tried to make mm -hmm. fun of it. Now they're doing it. Now they're paying for it. So it's mm -hmm. not as Javana. We're like, yes, we this is all natural. Like, you know, you, you just can't. 
you know, you can try to buy it, but you just can't, you know, we're born with it. And I, I do agree with that as well. I don't think I want to be anything else but what I am. And I love it. And that's something I instill in my daughter, you know, to be proud, proud of her dark skin, right. you know, her natural mm -hmm. hair. And that's kind of where we came up with the um, idea. And I'll talk about this a little later about our STEM superhero, Naira Nova. She has her natural hair. She has a crown. Her skin is brown, you know, and it's just, it is a bad divider. That is you, Nyla. She's in the back and talk. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we talked about it. Now, why did you choose your particular career? Um, and Aisha, I'll start back with you. But why did you choose your particular career? You know, growing up, I loved Clue. I loved Carmen Sandiego. Um, I liked puzzles. I liked figuring things out. I liked to make money. I liked to build things, um, see how things worked. All of that it encompasses STEM. So I, I got to marry my love of science, specifically biology, with my love of crime scene. And that's you know how I became a forensic scientist. I originally wanted to be a pediatrician and an actress. I didn't know how I was going to do both. But you know that's what I always used to say until I found out about forensic biology. And that is something that you know is widely used today. Um, it's very interesting. There's many different facets of forensic science and just my love of all of those things. Like I said, from the time I was eight years old, there's nothing I wanted to be except a STEM girl. That's what I know. That's it's been ingrained in me. I love it. And that is why now I encourage other young ladies to pursue STEM. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. I definitely agree. And forensic science, when I heard that, I always think of like CSI and stuff. Mm -hmm. and it's so funny. In my classroom, I call my students the, my investigators. And I'm like, you guys are working right. with CSI, right. and having problem solving and critical thinking. And it's like, because they can have exactly. the definitions of everything, but it's yeah. can, you, can you apply it? Can you think outside the box? So I think that is awesome. Exactly. And that's, that's who I was, an analytical problem solver. So for me to go that direction, it just made sense. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes. All right, um, Brian, your turn. And I, I know that you talked a bit about this, about your upbringing and stuff. And I really want you to really hit on about the just mental health, because I think it's such a stigma in the black community and we need to oh. make it you know, known that it's okay to go get help and ask for help. Like it's okay. So, yeah. so oh, how did you choose your career and you know, anything you want to talk about on that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I grew up in the city of Compton where I witnessed a lot of what we call community trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in places where there were liquor stores on every other corner. I grew up in a neighborhood where I saw a lot of gang violence. I saw a lot of prostitution or what they call now juvenile and regular human trafficking. Um, mm -hmm. I just I saw a myriad of trauma wow. and I was exposed to it at a very young age. And I was told that that trauma was normal. It was very normalized. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was placed in private school and I had gone to the homes of other students and my peers and realized that no, 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 no. This is actually not normal. And what I'm experiencing would actually cause a developmental delay. And so I, I had gotten older and I was in college and I, I was an undergrad and I witnessed I, I was undecided with my major at first. I knew that I wanted to help people, but I wasn't sure at what capacity. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I had gone in to my professor and I said to my professor, I really enjoy this class, but I'm my major all along was supposed to be biology. And right. I wanted to be I wanted to be a neonatologist. I wanted to work <laughs> in the neonatal intensive care unit with the babies who needed help. And then but psychology was something about that class that just pulled me. And so um I got into the class and I said, I think this is my calling. And my grandmother, mm -hmm. she was like, no, you need to be a medical doctor. That is not a real doctor. And I said, oh, no, a psychologist is a real doctor. Yes. And, mm -hmm. so, and then she said, well, why do you want to work with people in their brains? Like, we don't have any problems. And then it would always be just pray, go to church, pray it away, pray it away in the black community. Ooh, pray it away, yes. So, right, and I said, and I would say to them, well, I have learned in college through my counselor and through my psychology professor that while being spiritually whole is a good thing, we also need to be mentally whole. Ooh. And there's a part of the brain that have chemicals mm -hmm. that are released that, true indeed, with chemists and with biologists, 
we can all work together to figure out the brain. So I want to be a clinical psychologist. And I, I come to my grandma with all of these great ideas. And she still, she was like, yeah, you're not a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and mental health, those are quacks and shrinks. And so I spent a great deal of my time diving into, into the mental health field because I realized it was so much trauma that I was exposed to. And it was a negative connotation around seeking mental health because you'd be weak that I said, nope, this is, this is it. I'm passionate about this and I have to drive it. I love what you're saying because I, um, I'm originally from here in Indiana. And so, you know, we were murder capital for the longest. So I, I understand what you're talking about that community trauma. I remember in high school going to several friends' funerals. And, you know, mm-hmm. I even remember one time we were, we were actually getting ready to graduate. And you know how you go to your auditorium and you get your um, cap and gown. Mm-hmm. So I had just got killed. And I remember wow. they said his name mm-hmm. and we were looking around like he just died and they just threw his cap and gown over to the side. Like, you know, and, and in the black community, since we do have so much trauma, they think that we're okay with it and we can deal with it. Like right. I remember getting counselors to come in to help us when someone just died or an incident mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just like throw it over to the side and keep it moving. And so we had this facade for so long. And so I think mm-hmm. what you're saying is awesome about, you know, let let it know let us know that it's okay it's not a sign of weakness to go yeah. for help um because you know we all have experienced some type of trauma okay. or just just living day by day you know watching the news and stuff and you know if you can't deal with that you need to go talk to it and also what i heard you say about your grandma like i say the older generation they don't understand that you know like you said they pray it away they in church they're like Oh, yeah, black church. like you know, black churches like just pray, just pray. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you little, need a little bit more of that, and I'm glad that our generation yeah. and you guys' generation is seeing the value of it now and seeing that we actually need that. So that is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. And the black church, the black church in and of itself, they hold a lot of trauma within the black church. Oh, and not definitely. only does the black church yeah. hold a lot of trauma, but oftentimes what we find is that we rely on clergy so much. But what people don't understand is that. It's clergy has a certain range of what they are able to do. It's out of their scope of practice when you begin to talk about mental health with clergy. Yes. You know, I mean, they we can stay in our lane. Scriptures and they can give you, you know, some tips. Mm-hmm. But right. when it's something dark, deep that you're dealing with, you Come definitely need to go see a professional such as yeah, yourself. Right. And I think that is awesome. And I'm glad you fought for that instead of to be what you wanted to be. Because, you know, sometimes, and that's why I'm doing this as well to let young girls out there know if you want to go in a different direction, don't let someone tell you you're not a real doctor because you want to go into mental health mm-hmm. or you're, you're not, you know, if you go into forensic science, who wants to do that? You want to figure out, you know, no, that's is very important. And that's what we want people to see that there's all different facets of STEM. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's okay to follow your dreams and it's okay to figure out now or as you know, get exposure to it because you never know exactly where you might go or what you might want to go and, you know, in, in which direction. Mm-hmm. So awesome, ladies. My mom, if I can count, if I can't count anybody, she's always on. So my mom says hi and she's on, ladies. So mm-hmm. hi, mom. Yes. Hi, mom. Yeah, Sunday at six o'clock, she's on. She's like, and she really gets a lot out of it because, you know, she, when I told her I wanted to go to be an engineer because that was my, first thing I was going to go at first to be an engineer, she was like, okay, what is that? You know, I didn't know because back then it wasn't like, you know, now everybody knows it. So she gets a lot of just Mm -hmm. hearing her story. I think we lost Rian for a minute. So we're going to wait till she comes back. But um, while we're waiting, how did you end up with teaching now since we're, you know, still talking about why did you choose your career, Aisha? Like, is it something you always wanted to do or is there something that, you know, just kind of happened because you're moving? I know you had to move. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is that for years people have told me to teach and people have said that it's your calling. You are supposed to teach. You're supposed to be a teacher. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I'm meant to work, but I'm not teaching. Right. I'm not teaching. Right. And I have been running from it. And, you know, it, it just so happened that, I have two small children Okay. and being in the lab takes you away from them a lot. Mm. You know, there's times when maybe an experiment will go wrong or, you know, um, you just have, especially when I worked at a lab that required me to work 24, seven, 365, 
it, it took a lot um, of time away from the family. I had to find people to watch them sometimes if my husband was working. So teaching, even though I've been running from it for years, it just came around full circle and an opportunity presented itself. I, I went to visit this particular school. I absolutely loved it. They are a problem-based learning school, which is why I said I need to get with you. <laughs> But I, I love it. They they encourage STEM. They encourage global travel. It's a, a great school. And oh, I said awesome. this actually allows me to still be myself, still share my love of STEM and science. And it allows me to be able to be with my children more while they're at this young developmental stage because they need their mother. You know, they need their father, too, but they need me to be present. Right. And being in the lab, as much as I loved it, it was taking me away. And that's one of the things that I would love to see change about the STEM field. Is that Don't go there yet. Don't there go there yet. You're not there yet. Don't oh. go there yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hello, hello. Okay. But I just love, this is the first time I had all mothers on here. So let's give us some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to hear mothers in STEM. This is the right. first time I've had, because normally um, some of our STEM stations, of course, have been right out of college or still in college. Mm -hmm. So they're younger, so they, you know, or they, you know, strictly know what they're going for. They're going for their doctors, so they didn't stop and have kids. So this is our first mm -hmm. time. So I'm so excited because people need to see this, too, that, you know, mm -hmm. we're all educated. And I like what you said, too, yep. but we do put our family first. And so I know mm -hmm. she's in her car because she's at kids con, and so we're not going to try to hold her too long. But, you know, that's just what we do. We do this. You know, we break away, but we come back. Because our kids are important, they're our lives. We chose to have mm -hmm. them to have the best mm -hmm. upbringing, but we still don't want to deny ourselves of no. our father STEM. And so, if we can find something that fits, and that's kind of how I wanted to teach it because I saw the engineering route, I was like, that's going to take me away from my kids. You know, like I mm -hmm. felt the same way. So, that's awesome. All right, ladies. So, what do you like most about your career and your journey? And I know that I see you're starting something new. But you know what, what yeah. you're looking forward to. But you've been talking, so I'm gonna go to Brian now. So, Brian, what do you like most about your career? I am in the business of healing. Ooh. So let me tell you, Ooh. that is like it sends chills down my like arm right now talking about it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, being able to wake up in the morning and go to a facility where there are broken people, broken kids, broken mm -hmm. families. I mean, and, and literally for one hour, 45 minutes to an hour, be able to pour life into them, to be able to speak empowerment into their families, into their lives, to be able to hear their stories, hear their past, their pain, their narratives, and to be able to sit and hold that with them. And then to tell them that it's okay. We all kind of have our own <laughs> stuff that we unpacking mm -hmm. and we're dealing with. Yeah. Thank you for entrusting me. Thank you for coming into this facility and entrusting me with that to unpack that together. Now let's find ways that we can all come together and heal because there's nobody to blame here. The only time where I could say that I felt that it was like tough for me was um, dealing with the perp where the dad was the perp in the home and um, mom couldn't mm -hmm. get rid of him because she was so, she had like this really, um, really um destructive attachment to him yeah so it was a lot of deviant and things like that for me at times like that it's hard to hold that um so of course i have my own therapist but um there are mm -hmm. other times where i walk out of there at five o'clock from the clinic and i'm like that's right sis you did that today yeah, <laughs> good job you. Bree. i walk yeah, out and i'm like good job you know, um, those clients that are really resistant that I thought I'd never be able to get that little that little nine year old boy to speak because he's so tough and rough and all his brothers. Right. Are and I get him to finally open up and speak. It's like, see, that's what you wake up every morning for. That's why you do this. Wow. So that's like, why I like my career. You are working mm -hmm. in your purpose. You are definitely mm -hmm. and you can just feel the passion. So I love it. And I'm so mm -hmm. glad that you're a client and those people have you there because like you said, you're you're touching lives and you're 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 in the business of healing. So I love it. I love it. Um, we have Constance Clinton, which is my cousin. She said, Hello, beautiful ladies. Hey, hello. Hey, Connie. And then JC Chambers says, Awesome ladies. Yes, yes. All right, Miss Aisha. Um, what do you um like most about your career up to now? And you can even talk about what you're gonna start on, like what you're excited about tomorrow, because mm -hmm. it's a big change for you tomorrow. So that's well, as I mentioned before, I've always liked to figure things out because I'm an analytical problem solver. So being in the lab allowed me to do that. 
you know, knowing what you're expecting, but not always getting that result. Um, I thought that was just so much fun, you know, mixing chemicals together. That's one thing I loved about being in college. You know, I didn't like lecture so much, but I love being in the lab, yeah. especially, you know, I, I really didn't like chemistry lecture, but I loved chemistry lab, mixing mm-hmm. things together, mixing, the, you know, seeing the different colors form, seeing smoke come out, you know, things like that. Um, and my daughter's the same way now. You know, I have to tell her over and over again, your bathroom is not a science lab. Please stop mixing things together. <laughs> you know, please start mixing things together in your closet. Yeah, but, okay, yeah. <laughs> she got she got it honestly. I can say that much. Um, so I, I love that part of science, um, especially biology. I mean, it's the study of living things. So you cannot talk about life without talking about biology. So I loved all of that. Um, and like I said, the the fact that I love the crime shows and those type of games where you had to figure out who was the killer or who yeah. did the crime, things like that, or find find somebody or find the lost object. That's what led me to forensic science. And the school that I went to allowed me to actually take classes in all of the areas so I could actually see everything from forensic psychology to forensic law to, you know, doing autopsies. I, I got a taste of everything. And that just opened my eyes up to all of the different things that you could do. Now, leading up to being a teacher, again, like I said, it's something I thought I would never do. But what excites me about it, this, you know, being on this journey starting tomorrow is that I'm still able to do lab work. Yeah. I'm just doing it in a different way, doing it with students. And as much as I love to mentor, because I've been doing that for years, it is marrying all the things that I love together. I love empowering children, especially young girls. I love STEM. I love lab work. And I'm able to now do that in the same area and still be able to have time with my family because they do come first. I can always get another job, but I can't replace my kids. I can't replace my family. Yes. And I think that's what kind of kept me in education for so long because it is possible enough. But I'm still yeah. giving back and I'm touching lives. So I think right. we're working in right. the market. So that's awesome. Right. Now, um, Bree, what would you change about your career? Like, there's always things that, you know, we we like. But what was some things that you would um, want to change about your career? So in the article, mm-hmm. I said that there's absolutely nothing I would want to change. Right. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and if you have not read Bree's article, please, I have put the link down in the comments. And you can also go to NylaDenae.com to read up about her and her journey. But <laughs> I'll be honest. The one thing that I would change about my career is the way that it's moving towards the telehealth um, arena. Ooh, tell- and what I don't Ooh. like about that is um, telehealth, for those of you who don't know, um, who are watching, telehealth is basically what we're doing here. It is where you set up a television screen or a computer screen of some sort. Um, you can even do it from your iPad. And you are providing therapeutical services to a client by doing it mm-hmm. over the over the Skype or the VC or whatever, go meeting. What disturbs me about that is that I can't feel your vibe. I can't feel the energy in the room. Yeah. And when it comes mm. to behavioral health, there are certain behaviors that I need you to understand by way of touch, by way of smell, by way. If your trigger is a smell or a, a music or sound or some, I need to be in the room with you doing exposure therapy with you. Oh. I can't, this, this don't work for me. This, Why? This Skype, it doesn't work for me. Um, there are times where I need to hug my client because that client mm-hmm. has never felt the love of a mother because they were a foster child or they were detained oh. at the age of 12 for lighting a fire. And now they have been released from probation and now they are 16 years old and they've never felt the love of a woman's, genuine true embrace right and so i can't mm-hmm. do, i can't conduct therapy with a kid i can't get that kid to sit down over right. hey i just need you to sit down so we can focus and do this exercise and this intervention can't do that if you, you can easily turn the thing off and, and you ain't gotta have no therapy see that's what i don't like and so mm-hmm. the way that it's moving with telehealth that's the one thing i just my career is just <laughs> they, they, they losing it they losing the compassion the touch yeah health by doing that so Yes, and I think we're so quick to embrace technology, but it doesn't don't realize we're losing that personal touch, even through social media. Mm-hmm. People, like I always say, like we'll say happy birthday to somebody on Facebook, 
but then you won't call them or, you know, at least, you know, something mm -hmm. old school, like call me. I want to hear your voice. I want to, you know, and that's still not right there, but I understand. And I think that's where education is going too with the whole mm -hmm. home school, or not home school, but you know, like you can get on a computer and learn from that. Mm -hmm. And in some situations, especially if you're in college, you're more right. apt to do it, but like you're in, you know, they even have elementary now you can do it all online. And it's like, you're missing, mm -hmm. you have a five or six year old sitting behind the computer they're going to miss that, you know, Johnny this or the teacher pouring into them versus, you know, through the computer. So I definitely feel what you're saying. And this is and this is that social engagement piece. Yeah. You know, that social piece. Oh, yeah. yeah, I need that. Exactly. So that. That's where you get these, uh, not Unabomber, what you call it, C Columbine. You shoot. Yeah. Is your kids not socially aware, they're not socially appropriate of how to act in social settings, what fork to use, what spoon to use when you're at dinner, how to act, you know, in the elevator. Do you speak? Do you, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's make eye contact. Do you know how to share? Do you know how to wait your turn? Mm -hmm. You know, those things. Come we on, come on, come on, come on. Right. Yeah. There you go. You get it. <laughs> yes, but I feel it. That's why I said with education is good. Yeah. It's going the same way, and it's like mm -hmm. once they get the information, but we're stopping them from being able to be social in a you know social environment. Even now, we're stopping people from even leaving their homes if they can order food, get groceries, mm -hmm. get things delivered to their house. They're never going to leave, and when they do leave, they're going to be like you said, it's going to be socially <laughs> inept. They're going to not know what to do, and they're going to be looking. It's going to be crazy. So mm -hmm. it's just I think all careers are starting to go that way because even talking about like a medical doctor. You can go online and just look up WebMD and diagnose yourself. And then, you know, somebody go, you know, it's like, no, go to the doctor. See why you're breaking out. See why. Right. You're let the doctor really smell that smell. Or let the doctor <laughs> really see that bump or whatever. Right, that bruise. Come on, right? Yes, yes. yes. Awesome. All right, Aisha, how about you? What would you change about? And I know you kind of changed career, so it kind of mirrors what you just yeah. did as well. So. Well, you know, if going back to being in the lab and being the, in those type of fields, engineering, you know, I think that more and more women especially would consider STEM careers if they knew that these companies and these jobs were more understanding of women who want to have a family and have a career because there's nothing wrong with that. But, I, you know, my belief is that they make us choose and we shouldn't have to choose. We should right. be able to have a family and have a career. But most of the, these careers in STEM, they don't want you to have families. They don't want to be forgiving of that. I've been in situations where I've been screamed at by a supervisor because my child was sick and I had to miss work. Um, I've been in situations where they didn't understand if I had to leave early because the school called and said my child had a temperature that didn't allow them to stay in school. Um, things like that. I also would change some of the hazing that goes on in STEM because I have been hazed by other women in STEM oh, and it shouldn't wow. be that way. Oh yeah. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, you know, I'm not going to call any names, no, but no. we don't want to put them out there. You know, but I, these are women, women that I looked up to, especially, you know, one woman in particular, but she was a woman of color. And I was so uh, excited to see her. I, I was fresh out of college, uh, fresh out of college. Um, I was happy to start that job and I, I saw her, I said, Oh yes. You know, wow. I get a mentor, someone who looks like me, someone who has a high level position, but this woman contaminated my samples. She hid things from me. It, you know, really she made my time in that position hell when all I wanted to do was learn from her. And she missed out on the opportunity to mentor somebody because I was, like I said, fresh out of college, I was green. She could have told me anything because I was just so happy to be there and she missed out on that opportunity by hazing me and, and feeling intimidated when I wasn't there to take her job. So I would change that. Uh, you know, there, there are not that many of us in STEM. We need to work together. Yeah. We need to support one another. I'm not trying to take your job, steal your spotlight. Yeah. You can't steal mine. And that's what you know, like Yeah, she was threatened. Um, we have Brandy Brown mm -hmm. on here. Hey, Brandy. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's probably one of Brandy is one of the ones who contacted you through our Instagram, so you guys can be here. So you had never met her, but she knows you guys very well. So hi, Brandy. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's Hello. what I want to say. She was um threatened, and we shouldn't be threatened of other mm -hmm. other anyone mm -hmm. in the same field because you know your stuff, and mm -hmm. obviously what's for you is for you. But it's a shame when. If it's only a few African Americans, 
we do get threatened by, oh, she's going to steal my spotlight or they're going to like her mm-hmm. better or, yeah. you know, like we're both fighting and we don't understand. We work together. We're more powerful when we work together. So, that's oh, yeah. Yeah, the strength in numbers, but she didn't get that. Um, you know, she did apologize to me a year later. Um, <laughs> and and I, I'm grateful for that, but it, it never should have happened. Um, so I would change that. Like I said, I would change the fact. I think there needs to be more understanding in these jobs. We are so powerful as women in STEM. Yeah. We have so many skill sets. We are intelligent, articulate. They need to have us at the table because a lot of times they don't. You know, they keep us out of things. So I would change all of that. You can't make decisions about women in STEM without having a woman in STEM present. It doesn't work that way. Well, that's why our next question is. But um, J.C. Chambers asked Aisha. I didn't think she heard or that person. I don't know if it's a woman. I'm assuming. But they didn't hear about what's your new career. Oh, I'm going to be teaching science, seventh and eighth grade science. So specifically um, life science and physical science. Ooh, have fun with that middle school. I ran for middle school, so I bless you. Go just <laughs> have an open mind. That's a tough age. But they want someone like you. So just know that you're there for a reason, and it'll be very mm-hmm. Um JC Chambers also said there's a lot of stereotyping engineering slash STEM field can be so difficult mm-hmm. for women of code to gain a foothold. And that's true because they look at reality TV. And they think we're coming in there like with our fingers raised and, you know, we're all mm-hmm. and we're loud and we're ratchet. No. But if yeah. you trust me, I will check you now. But I would do it professionally. But that's why I wanted to do the spotlight so people can see mm-hmm. these are women of color that's coming from different journeys. Because I know, Aisha, you you were, you have an interesting background and even like your, school, you. your elementary school and stuff. So I want you to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Well, we're all coming from different backgrounds. Like Bree's coming from Compton. I'm coming from Gary. You know, like, but... We are very professional. We have our degrees. We are doing what mm-hmm. we do. And so we're trying to break those stereotypes. And that's one of our visions for Nile the Nay Enterprises is to break the, the stereotypes and you know and break the yeah. gender barriers. You know, like no, we're here and we're we're very confident mm-hmm. that we do. So that mm-hmm. leads to our next question. How do you combat the stigma of being a woman of color in STEM? Like what is the <laughs> for? Um, and this can go with tips and advice too, because we I know we're um I know Brie has to get back to her family, so we're gonna kinda add those two together. But by being yeah. a woman of color in STEM, how do you combat that stigma, Brie? And then what would be some tips and advice of those that's coming behind you or those that's you know on the side of you? How would you give them that advice of what they can do to make sure that they have a you know, don't run into that or how would they be able mm-hmm. to handle those situations? Okay. So I would say um for as, as far as the stigma, um, how do I combat that? By showing up every day. Ooh. Every single day that I put yeah. 10 toes to the ground, I make for sure that I show up for not just myself, not just for my kids, but for the culture. I make sure that mm-hmm. I, when I step into that room, yeah, I make good. sure that I give it my all and that I'm culturally competent. I make sure that when I'm sitting at these tables with the directors, with the executive directors, when I am sitting down, I'm having these meetings, I make sure that I'm speaking from the black perspective and that I'm giving them my perspective as a black woman. So Mm -hmm. generally when I'm sitting at these tables, it's very Caucasian male dominant in the mental health field or it's Caucasian woman dominant in the- Then this is woman in general. That's just them, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, And they show up for their culture so who would I be not to show up for mine in this meeting? And so if we're having a meeting about trauma or if we're having a meeting about um, children who, you know, are experiencing certain types of discrimination within the school districts or whatever, when I show up, I am there to advocate simply for the child. And then I'm also mm-hmm. there to advocate for the culture because culturally mm-hmm. speaking, that's what you'll always hear me say. And then at these meetings, again, I'm not showing up as the angry black woman. I'm showing up mm-hmm. as the the black woman who has Mm -hmm. several degrees hanging up on the wall who can articulate Mm -hmm. herself well who has a background and a knowledge of what i'm speaking of so i'm not coming to you snapping my neck and roll but Mm -hmm. i will show up culturally and i will tell them i'll say well from the black perspective culturally speaking i don't think that you guys are being culturally competent let's think of how this may make the asian americans feel or let's think about how this may make the Mm -hmm. hispanic american let's think about all gamuts because Mental health is not just for the Caucasian male or for the Caucasian mm-hmm. woman. 
Um, mm-hmm. So that's the stigma there is by just showing up for the culture um, because they don't they don't let us sit at every table. We're not CC'd on every email. <laughs> yeah. So um, Ooh, that's nope. that. And then as far as tips and advice, my biggest tip to any black woman, any black girl, who any black male who's watching this right now is follow your passion. If you mm-hmm. are passionate about it, whether it's science, whether it's technology, whether it's engineering or mathematics. I wasn't the best at mathematics. Let me tell you, I can't put two numbers together, but I tell you this, I can deal with them. I can deal with behavioral health. I can deal with behaviors and mental health. And if I can show up for my culture with my passion and give it my all, I know that I'm making a difference. And I know that I'm impacting this world in a, mm-hmm. in a global way um, and in a cultural way. So my thing is just follow your passion and always know that any contribution that you give to, to any field, especially the STEM field, know that it, it means mm-hmm. a lot to us. Wow. That was awesome. Yes. We felt all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. There are some comments. So let me go back to the comments. Um, there's a Ricardo Martin and I think he might be biased. He says, shout out to all three of the ladies, but especially Aisha Martin. Love you, babe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a little biased. Yes, I figured that out. Keep doing what you're doing. And then there's a Tanya Nicole that says, great conversation, ladies. And then J.C. Chambers. Mm-hmm. Said, oh, you know, Tanya. Okay, hi, Tanya. Mm-hmm. And then J.C. Chambers said, there's a, such a major shortage. I've been looking for a programmer for my team, and it's been so difficult to fill that spot. Mm-hmm. I encourage kids every day to go into STEM, but the majority mm-hmm. want to be NFL or NBA players. It's a sad mm-hmm. And it is. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why, because they don't see us. They mm-hmm. don't know. They go to the doctor is normally not a, you know, African-American doctor, unless they're truly, you know, seeking out African-American doctor. Mm-hmm. Or they go mm-hmm. to the dentist, not African-American dentist, you know, or they go get their eyes checked. So they don't see, or they don't definitely go get mental health checkup, you know, like, so mm-hmm. it's like they're, you know, and even teachers, I'm one of, usually not one of the only black science teachers in any school that I'm in. And one time mm-hmm. I was one of two in the district. So, you know, they don't mm-hmm. see that. So we're telling them to be something that they don't see. And so that's what we're, we're coming against all that. They see NFL, they see NBA players, but they don't, mm-hmm. realize it's harder to do that than what we're doing. You know, like you might, you have a better chance coming on this side. And having a longevity of a career, but we, yep. while we have to make sure that they see us, and that's why something like this is very awesome. And, you know, something to get mm-hmm. up, it out there. Um, and um, they say great tips. All right, Aisha, it's your turn. So, how did you come back to stigma being a woman in color, and then some tips and advice as well? Well, yeah, she said it all, but I know. Um, <laughs> well, she is very yeah, <laughs> but. For me, no, I have been mistaken for the janitor. I have been told that I will never make it in science, but you're really good with people and you're really <laughs> organized. Why don't you be a secretary? I've been told that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, I've been mistaken for the delivery person when I was really there to pick up the samples to be processed. Oh, wow. Um, so that is why, going back to what you said, that is why my mantra is girls can't be what they don't see. Mm-hmm. That's why I make sure to put myself out there, try to make sure I put things out on social media, whether it's the girl in Mexico, the girl in Asia, the girl in Africa, the girl in Compton. What I, I want girls to see that we don't all look like Bill Nye. No shade to Bill Nye. But we don't all look like that. Too. We don't look like when I walk in the classroom, I, no. I look like Bill Nye. No way. No. You know, I have walked in the classroom. They looked at me. They said, you're. You're a scientist? Mm-hmm. Oh, but you dress so nice. Yeah. Uh, well, you're, very you're pretty. Well, you got They're your very hair, got your hair on. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what I want them to see. I want them to see that we can dress fashionably. I want them to see that we're articulate. We we don't roll our eyes, you know, shake our neck. I can speak in meetings. I can speak very well. <laughs> and I know how to articulate what I want. And I don't back down from that. I'm not nasty, but I'm very firm in what I say. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Um, and that's been a problem with some people, especially in this field, because again, there's not that many of us. Sometimes I'm the only person in the room. Going back to what you said about teaching. I I remember when I was substituting, I was the only black person in the entire science department. Mm -hmm. Um, not to mention there weren't that many females, but I was the only, only one of color. Yeah. The, 
other things that, you know, that have to be changed is that we are very intelligent. We are very articulate, like I said, and people need to see that. That needs to be at the forefront. So I would tell young girls who are pursuing these careers and these fields that they have a voice. They need to know that they can use it because they are smart. You know, STEM girls, we run the world. Yeah, The world does not move without us. We are in engineers. We are in, you know, technology, mathematics. We put a man on the moon. So girls need to know, especially girls of color, especially (laughs) girls of color, that we are all that. We don't ever have to shrink in a room to make other people feel comfortable. You just need to step up your game. That's how I look at it. I would tell these girls to go seek out a mentor, especially in the field that they're looking to go into. Seek out a mentor, especially one of color, especially one that looks like them, who's doing what they want to do. Seek out that person and start, you know, interning early. Start looking at internships. That's something I wish I had done early on, which I didn't do. But I want girls to know that they should go ahead and seek those out early so they can get their feet wet. A lot of things I did, I learned on the job. When I could have learned in school, I could have learned on an internship, but I had to learn on the job and I had to learn fast. So I would tell girls to do that. Um, and just don't give up. There, there are going to be rough days. I'm not going to lie about that. But just to keep going, keep going and yeah. show up. Like Brianna said, show up, show up and show out. Yes. Yes. I always say we are not dimming our lights anymore. We are walking mm-hmm. in. With our heads mm-hmm. high, our heels high, and everything mm-hmm. else, and we are not shrinking. Mm-hmm. Um, we nope. have a question from my cousin Connie. She says, "Where are you guys located?" Um, Brie, are you still in Compton or in California? Or where? I'm in Los Angeles. She's in Los Angeles. Then Aisha, you're from. You just left. Uh, Orlando. Well, I was. I was. I just left Orlando. Now I'm in Atlanta. Now she's in Atlanta. All right. All right, Brie. We're gonna go back to you. Um, your future goals. And then how your family has been an influence for you. Okay, so my family has been an influence. I want to answer that one first because okay, I'm going to go to this next one. So mm-hmm. my family has been an influence because I've had a lot of family trauma. I had a lot mm-hmm. of family drama and trauma. And okay. um, they were pretty much the catalyst. They were the, the fuel. They were the thing that, you know, kind of helped me to understand that this is not normal. <laughs> we all need mental health. And mm-hmm. I need to be the first one to actually go and seek mental health so that I may be stronger, so that I may be able to convince the others. And I realized that no matter what, if you take care of yourself in mental health, that doesn't mean that others want to do the same. And you can't push them to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I just tried to be a model of that. And I continue Mm -hmm. to be a model for that for my family. Um, Some of them have jumped on board and others may not have. Um, And I don't treat them any different because I come from a standpoint of not judging. Um, however, their their greatest influence on my career choice has been just their dysfunction. And that's the best way I can put it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, as far as my future uh, goals right now, like I said, I am a mental health clinician. Um, I am I just got accepted to Pepperdine University. Um, in their cl- right. Thank you. Thank you. In their clinical psychology program. Yes. So um, I yeah. will in the next, what is it? Three to four years In the next about three to four years, I should be Dr. Brian. Yes. 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 Right. Thank you. Thank you. And unfortunately, <laughs> my grandmother who raised me, who said that it, it wasn't a doctor, she won't be alive or she's not alive to to witness that. But I'm pretty sure she's proud of me. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, that, that's my goal. My goal ultimately is to be a child psychologist. Um, I just started my nonprofit organization. It's called time. It's T I M E. And, um, that acronym is together impacting minority excellence. Oh, love it. So yeah. Um, I just, I'm getting ready to kick off this backpack giveaway. It's on August the 11th out here at Compton college. Um, I'm doing it at the college that I graduated from. I graduated from Compton College at 17. So I went wow, back to that same really college. Yes. Right. I went back to that same college and um, I'll be handing out 500 backpacks in school wow. supplies wow. to oh. students. Yeah, to students in the city of Compton. Because for me, I've always felt that mental health and education go hand in hand. Yeah. And so I show up and I show out when it comes to education, advocacy and mental health advocacy for kids. Um, so I decided to use my nonprofit and do this backpack giveaway. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my future goals is just to be a, a black female psycho- child psychologist and just show up for these kids. Because like she said, she's right. How can they be something that they don't see? So if I model it, mm-hmm. 
my daughters, even mm-hmm. with them, I tell them, hey, mm-hmm. look, mommy's going to be a doctor. What are you going to be? Oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. One daughter wants to be a lawyer. and The other one wants to be a psychologist like me. Oh, I'm like, okay, all right. So I gave you the blueprint. Now let's get it. Right. Let's get it. And I think that's awesome. You actually answered the the last question of giving back. So I probably put it on there, but, <laughs> but giving the book back, you know, away. And that is awesome. Mm-hmm. And we're also doing something like that here in Orlando, you know, with the um, back to school backpack giveaways as well. Mm-hmm. But one of the questions um, someone said, um, ladies, how do you start workshops in your hometown? And I know that we all have like a non-for-profit or organization mm-hmm. that we all run that we're actually giving back. So if you read those articles, people, um, that I linked from Breeze and Aisha's articles, you can um, actually keep in touch with them. You can email them and there has information mm-hmm. about the organizations that they're starting and the things that they're doing. So that is awesome. So great job. Awesome. Awesome, Bree. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Aisha, mm-hmm. what is, um, do you want to do family influence or future goals first? It's up to you. Um, we can start with family. You know, my mom has always told me I could do anything that I wanted to do. As long as I applied myself, as long as I put God first and prayed about you know, my moves and that my steps are ordered, I could do anything. Ooh. So no one could ever tell me different. No teacher, no person on the street. I'd say my mama said I could do anything I wanted to do. So that's always been in the back of my mind in everything that I've done. Um, I come from strong stock I come from very strong women. They're very strong women in my family. Um, So I have never thought otherwise. Um, You know, I come from a lot of teachers and nurses. So the nurses in my family, they were the closest that I had to STEM STEM girls. Um, But they are a major part of who I am and why I have the strength that I have, especially my mom. Um, As far as future goals, um, I actually have decided to also go and get a PsyD and I will be pursuing forensic psychology. Hey, hold on. That was was my favorite. When she said that, Brie had a, she's like, yes. 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 So, um, yes. (laughs) I'm very excited about that. Um, I've narrowed down to a couple of schools, but that was one of the classes that really excited me when I was working on my master's degree. I love that class. And I said, I am going to pursue a doctorate in that. So that's, you know, later on down the road, but I will be Dr. Martin. I'm oh, already putting that out there. Doctors, I'm um, that my, I'm encouraging me and inspire me. Yeah. yeah. Go um, get that EDD. So, yes, you, you are. Right well. Well. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. But I, you know, I plan on doing that. Um, as you mentioned, my organization, I do have an organization, Fems for STEM. So I plan on doing more things in the community, bringing girls in because, I'm trying to usher more girls into STEM. So I'm planning on doing things in the community for that. Um, especially in the Bahamas, that's that's near and dear to my heart. So I'm going to start there, have some big plans in mind for, for the Bahamas. And I'm planning on branching out into other areas as well where we are underrepresented in those areas. So I plan on branching out and doing workshops and activities there. I'm always looking to collaborate with someone because you know I am the S in STEM. But there are so many technologists and engineers and mathematicians in, in the field. And again, we are stronger when we are working together. There's strength in numbers. So I plan to do that. And, you know, putting out more books and things like that. I encourage people to keep in touch with me. I, I would love to hear from, you know, whoever's watching, whoever's reading, you know, the interview questions um, to help me bring more girls into STEM. Right. That, that is my goal. And going back to your article, you talked about you were um, raised and primarily educated. Well, okay. In Europe. In, in Europe, Europe, yeah. So hey, between have- Germany, yeah. Germany and Belgium, mostly. Um, so I plan to go back there as well, like to my old school and, and, you know, talk to students there. I would love to, you know, allow them to see that somebody, you know, came from there, came back to the U.S. and is doing, you know, things on a large scale here in the U.S. But, yeah, and that's another thing that, A lot of people don't know about me when they see me. They think, you know, that I grew up somewhere in the U.S. So I've had people, you know, predominantly, as was mentioned earlier, they're predominantly white males in STEM. So Mm -hmm. they'll talk to me thinking that I don't understand where they're coming from. Oh, have you been here? Have you been to Paris? And and I said, okay, I I used to go there on the weekend. You know, (laughs) that's not a big deal. You know, they don't know where I came from. 
And, you know, I've had someone tell me, oh, you know, do you like these big words that I'm using? And I have to tell them, uh, I'm sorry, but I, you know, I have a master's degree and nothing that you said was a big word. You know, yeah. so they, they need to know that we, we are very intelligent women. We're yeah. very intelligent women. We bring a lot to the table. And, you know, we have a, you know, we have it going on. That's, yeah. that's pretty much what it is. And I see Bria got some 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 guests joining her. They're sucking. I saw them coming in the car. I was like, oh, yeah. but I love that. Like we are moms, and so we still have the mom patrol. Yeah. We have somebody photo by me. Hi, hello. Yeah, yeah, that's why it was important. Like you know, we can talk forever. You guys have been amazing, and I know our audience has really gotten something out of it. Um, you guys are giving back, and that's what it's all mm -hmm. about. It's like we've made it somewhat you know we're not made it made it but we're able to give back and reach back and so that's what this is all mm -hmm. about i love that mm -hmm. the spotlight has been on you too and you guys have such a rich history and you come from diverse backgrounds one comes from compton and one comes from london i mean like you know in europe mm -hmm. like it's like amazing and we can come here and talk and have the same experiences which is crazy because you like you talked about somebody mistaking you for the janitor same here mm -hmm. or or the teacher assistant, or just somebody making copies. For yeah. No, I'm the teacher. Right. So this has been awesome. I know it is Sunday night, so I don't want to keep you guys any longer. But I just want to thank you guys for being here. Thank our audience for interacting, asking questions, giving us kudos, mm -hmm. and just, you know, congratulating us because they all said, go ahead, Dr. Mark, Dr. Clinton. <laughs> you know, like we are here. Yes. And it's mm -hmm. so funny. My cousin, he called me, he said he had a dream that I went back for my doctor, and then you guys start talking about it. I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> don't put that on me right now. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I was like, and it's so weird. So it's awesome. So I just want to thank you guys. Um, I also want to just say, I know um, JC um, Chambers said something about, you know, there's workshops for girls who code. Also, like I said, we have our own individual organizations that we are giving back. Now that they mm -hmm. have the Nyla Nova STEM Academy, so just please look us up, guys, and please support um, so we can get the word out that we're all doing great things and we want to help mm -hmm. our community. So that is awesome. Yep. I think we lost Bree. But before mm -hmm. we go, I just want to say, if you guys have not heard of who is Nyla Nova, please check our website out. We have a children's book and we have an activity book. And they're um, for little girls of color because we said, earlier that they can't see they can't become what they don't see and so we nope. can't wait for the seventh grade because you will see miss martin when they come in they're going to have their own preconceived notions or they're going to have mm -hmm. be not confident about what they can do in the community or what they can mm -hmm. do in the so we need mm -hmm. to start early and so i thank you once again for coming out to the who was nyla nova book release i think that was so awesome in the midst of you traveling and moving you still came mm -hmm. back to and so if any way I can support you with your endeavors, please let Thank us know. You. This will not be the Thank last time we talk. Nope. We definitely have nope. to keep in touch. I know I'll be visiting Atlanta and want to do some stuff there as well. So yeah. thank you guys. Thank everyone for um, coming thank out, you. please. I say coming out like we was actually somewhere, but <laughs> logging on. Um, all those great comments. Please, please share this out to everyone on your social media pages so we can have yeah. more people. Um, view what this because this was such a great conversation also please um we have this on youtube as well so you know please check us out my mom said congratulations ladies she had enjoyed us Thank you. Hi, says, Shape Thank you. Spartans. i'm sure you know what that means shape spartans S -H -A. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. all right all right <laughs> yeah well hey i'm like yes yes so thank you, everyone. Enjoy your rest of your day. Have a sensational week. Mm -hmm. uh, and have a great first day. Just know you're going to be awesome. And the kids are so lucky to have you. And call me for this because I've been there. I just taught seventh grade. I taught physical science, earth science, okay. life science. So if I can help you in any way, okay. feel free to call me. I'm serious. I can definitely be a resource. I'm starting something new. So I know I'm going to need help, too. So, hey, we can. <laughs> collaborate together. So thank you guys. Thank you for joining us. Temptation Spotlight. If you have not, please check out the articles and check out NylaDenae.com. Films for, um, what is it? Films? Films for STEM. Films for the number four. Right. 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 And like I said, all this will be there. Um, thank you guys. 
Bye bye. I should stay on for a second once I end the broadcast. Okay. 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 Thank you guys have a sensational week. You guys are awesome. <laughs>